Little Polar Bear. Story by Hans de Beer. Pictures by Hans de Beer. Try to remember what Lars learns about the tropics. Enjoy the story. It was a big day for Lars. He was going with his father on his first hunting trip. Lars was white all over, just like his father. In fact, at the North Pole, where Lars lived, everything was white all over because it was covered in ice and snow. Lars's father showed him how to do all kinds of things, follow tracks, swim, and dive. He talked and talked, and Lars listened silently, paying close attention. Once his father disappeared under water and stayed so long, Lars began to worry. But when his father finally reappeared, he had a big fish for supper. When it was time to go to sleep, Lars's father said, Make a big pile of snow to protect yourself from the wind, like I do. Lars was proud of his pile of snow, but also very tired. He quickly fell asleep, just like his father. But during the night, the ice began to crack. The piece where Lars was lying broke off. When Lars woke up in the morning, he was all alone in the middle of the sea. It was getting warmer and warmer, and the piece of ice and Lars's pile of snow were getting smaller and smaller. When the ice was almost completely melted, Lars saw a big barrel drifting by. Luckily, Lars was able to reach the barrel and climb on top of it. Then a storm began to rage. As Lars clung to his bobbing barrel, he missed his father and his pile of snow more and more and more. After the storm, Lars drifted on the sea for a very long time. At last he saw land, but could not see any snow or ice. Almost everything was green and the sun was very warm. Lars carefully slid off the barrel and stepped onto the beach. The beach was hot and yellow. It burned Lars's paws. He ran to the river nearby to get his feet cooled down. But just as he was about to plunge in the water, a very big, tan-colored animal sprung out of the water. Boo! it said to Lars. Lars quickly ran to hide. I was only joking, called the big, tan-colored animal. My name is Henry, and I'm a hippopotamus. Who are you, and where do you come from? And why are you so white? Well, Lars was very confused by the questions. He said, well, where I come from, everything is white, and that's why I'm white. He told Henry about his long journey and asked him how he could get back home to see his father. Henry listened very carefully, and then finally he said, well, I'm a bit confused, but I think, I think I can solve your problem. The only one who could help you is Marcus, and he's an eagle. He has traveled all over the world. He will know where you come from and how you can get back home. But we'll have to cross the river and go through the jungle and climb the mountain if we want to find Marcus. Lars was so happy. But when he looked at the river, he said, The only problem is that I can't swim. Not yet, anyway. No problem at all, said Henry. He laughed. Just climb on my back. I won't sink. Lars was astonished by all the things he saw in the jungle. Henry patiently explained everything to him. Lars especially liked the tall brown stalks that Henry called trees. They were such fun to climb. In one brown stalk sat a very funny green animal, which suddenly turned white, just like Lars. It's a chameleon, said Henry. It can change its color any time it wants. Lars thought that that was handy. A great thing to be able to do, too. What's that, said Lars. That's a butterfly, said Henry. She is very beautiful, and she flies very quietly through the sky. 
at the edge of the jungle, the mountains began to get very, very steep. It was a bit cooler, and Lars felt more comfortable near the mountains. Henry found climbing difficult, but Lars helped by telling him where to put his feet. After a while, Henry was exhausted. That's enough for today, he said. I think we'll continue tomorrow. Let's just rest here and look at the nice view. As Lars looked out over the land and the sea, he began to feel homesick. Cheer up, said Henry. You'll be home again soon. The next day, they climbed higher and higher up the mountain. Henry had to stop often to catch his breath. But at last, he called, Here comes Marcus! As a huge bird swooped down near Lars. Lars had to duck. Oh, don't be afraid, said Henry. Marcus seems gruff at times, but he's really quite friendly. Henry said good morning to Marcus and politely explained why they had come. The eagle looked at Lars and then he said, Well, well, polar bear in the tropics, you're a long way from home, aren't you, young man? Fortunately, though, I can arrange to get you back to the North Pole. Tomorrow morning, you will meet Samson at the beach. Oh, thank you, said Lars, very shyly. The next morning, Henry and Lars met Marcus on the beach. Right on time, said Marcus proudly, as a huge gray whale arrived. Although Henry was happy for Lars, he was also very sorry to see him go. Take care of yourself, he said sadly. Thanks for everything, Henry, Lars called back as the whale swam away out into the ocean. Marcus flew along a bit to set them on their way. Henry stood alone on the beach. He kept watching for a very long time after Lars and the whale had disappeared. Samson swam a long way until they were surrounded by ice and snow. We must be near your home in the North Pole, he said. At the same moment, Lars called, There's my father! Father, father, I'm back home! Lars's father couldn't believe his eyes. There was Lars riding on the back of a very large whale. Lars's father was very tired from looking for Lars for a very long time, but he wasn't too tired to catch a big fish for Samson to thank him for bringing his son home. Samson waved and swam away. And now, said Lars's father, we must go straight home because your mother is very worried about you. On the way home, Lars rode on his father's back. He was very happy to be back at the North Pole. Everything was white and he was surrounded by snow and ice. He loved that. But this time Lars talked and talked and talked while his father listened. He told his father about all the amazing things he had seen in the tropics. He talked about Henry the hippopotamus. He talked about the tall brown things called trees. He talked about the chameleon that could change colors. He was so excited to be home. The end.